welcome to the next video of the um, Nissan Sentra conversion to an electric car and well I have the motor and the transmission you know coupled together and we're going to make a test in a few minutes I want to show you the test but um, for the test I need a 12 volt battery and well this is the original battery that came with the car and since the car um, has been not running for so long uh, I needed to recharge the battery for my test and I'm using these solar panels to charge the battery we my wife and I are building solar panels that we intend to put on the roof to charge the electric car um, so basically after the original initial uh, investment in the car we should be driving for free since we intend to use the solar panels to charge the batteries um, okay I'm going to show you the the motor and the transmission working together. The yeah, motor and the transmission placed together. As you can see, all the screws are in place for the transmission and everything's ready for a test. Um, also, I just put some uh, covering for the starter motor. We don't need a starter motor now, so we just covered the hole to protect it from the dust. And um, this is how it's going to go. The way that these motors are connected is if you want to run in counterclockwise direction, which is this direction, looks from the transmission side, you connect these two terminals and we connect cables to the other two terminals. The order doesn't matter. So we just look the connect the connectors here and this is the right order, first negative, then positive. So let's see. This is negative, and this is positive. So let's test. As you can see, this is working really great. No vibrations, no sounds, nothing weird. Uh, when you first test this, sometimes it's possible that the clutch disc is not aligned, so you need to pull the lever of the clutch to center the clutch. I already did that, so you can see that it's very stable and it's working really great. Um, also, uh, you have to consider that if you intend to put more than 96 volts into one of these motors, this is for the Impulse 9 in particular, um, you have to uh, advance time the motor. You can do that by unscrewing these four screws and you move this to the right or to the left depending on uh, if you want counterclockwise spinning or clockwise spinning. So if you see in this part it indicates where is the timing. So you see clockwise, neutral, counterclockwise. So this is already being uh, advanced time. It is aligned to the to this bolt. So if you see, it's aligned with the counterclockwise advanced timing. It's important that you follow your uh, manual instructions for these motors because they can they are very resistant, but they also need a lot of care. For example, you never test these motors with more than 12 volts. These motors can spin really fast with no load, and they literally can disintegrate they can explode. So you test these motors with 12 volts only and there are a few other very important uh, uh, requirements for proper maintenance of the motor. For example, you don't run it over uh, 3,500 RPMs or, or just pours of 5,000 RPMs at the, at the most. Uh, you make sure that the motor doesn't stall or like you don't step on the accelerator and the brake at the same time because if the motor is not spinning with current it will burn really fast things that are not covered by the warranty so make sure that uh, the instruction of the motor have been read before doing any test because uh, there are very important things that need to be followed uh, in the next video I'm going to show you when the motor and the transmission is back inside of the car. It's time to put it back into the car and start making tests with inside the car. Thank you.